Sisters, give all praise Ahaya Ashre Ahaya, the Alahayam of Alahayams, and our Dano Yache Meshiaka, the salvation of all the world. Yes, indeed. And our mother, the Ruaka Kwadoshi. Today we are going to look at the word God. We're going to start to learn what the actual word is for the Alahayam, for the powers, in Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 17. For Ahayya Alahayam is Alahayam. The word there is H430. Right. You tap on the concordance. Yes. The word is literally Alahayam. And right. please go on the website, download the Hebrew document. And you can see from about number 122 to 124 to see the, the breakdown of the actual word Alahayam. Right. The word Allah is the the power that controls that and then the ha makes it plural. So Allah ha is the powers them. The powers them that control the lion. To Allah in our language also means lion. And Allah ha yim. Yim comes from the word for waters. Iyim or iyim, the word for water. And also in the or seas, it'll say seas in the scriptures say yim. And then the word for water is miyim, the root word being iyi, which is source. Iyi. Because the water is the source, it was there from the beginning of creation. The source of, or source of creation. Right, when water he made, man. right, in this world, in this realm, everything came from the water. Because the earth also came out of the waters. Right. So the word Allahayim is the powers them that control the land, which is Allah, and the waters. Yim, or yim. So Ahai has been gracious to cause us to understand the word in our language and we look in the concordance to see. And of course it says Elohim, which comes from the Yiddish, but we know Yiddish is not Hebrew by now. Yes. The word is plural. Alahayams in the ordinary sense, but specifically used in the plural, thus especially with the article of the supreme Alahayam. So there you know when it's even the supreme Alahayam is plural. Because the supreme is the three, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's right. Right? You know, the man is the head of his family. So when Ahaya is mentioned, then Alahayam, speaking of his family, which is the Son and the Holy Spirit. That's right. Occasionally applied by way of deference in magistrates. Right? Because angels are Alahayams too. Right. That's why Ahaya is the Alahayam of Alahayams. Right. Because the three, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, that Alahayam is greater than all the Alahayams of the world. That's right. Okay. And sometimes as a superlative, angels. So then we see it can be applied to the angels as well because they are powers, though they are not the supreme power. That's right. Exceeding Alahayam or Alahayams. Because it's singular or plural. Very great judges, mighty. Right. So going back to Deuteronomy 10 and 17, it says, for Ahaya, your Alahayam, is Alahayam of oh, Alahayams. Therefore, we understand that there are other Alahayams in the world. Because Paul said in uh, 1 Corinthians that there are many that call the Donos and there are many that call Alahayams. But we know there's only one, that's right. a true one, a great Allah. Now, that's the Father. <laughs> Speaking of it, particularly Allah, and that's the singular. That's if you right. tap on H410, please. Right, it's Allah, or L in the Yiddish, which is not Hebrew. That's right. right. The word is Allah. Right. All right. Uh, it means an adjective mighty, especially the Almighty, but used also of any deity. There we see the other angels there, Allahayams too, because right. they are the sons of Allahayam. So you can see that the word is not very uh, straightforward. It's 
it's a it's, it's a broad or it's like we're called man we're right. called Adam every everybody we're all carnal beings we're all Adam right. and the heavenly beings the children of Allah Hayyam they're Allah Hayyams as well right. and that's why it's important as well to know his name that's right and this is why we're going into what does this word God mean to understand to make sure we're not calling on anyone besides the true living Allah Hayyam do you want to finish off reading the definition? Yes, please. This is uh, your yes. Allah. Is it Allah, a goodly great idol, mighty one, power strong. So we have Allah, which is singular right. for the power. And it's a general term. Hence, it can also be an idol because you can say you worship Allah, but you're actually worshiping uh fallen angel or evil spirit right. so now we understand what the actual word for the powers are Allah Hayyam in the plural and Allah in the singular and we know that Ahaya Allah Hayyam to put a stamp on who you're talking about That's right. he is Allah Hayyam of Allah Hayyam so that it is understood that you know who you're worshipping right. now let's look at the scriptures to understand this word God firstly to see what we were commanded to do Exodus chapter 23 verse 13 Ahayah spoke to us very straightly concerning calling on idols uh, in all things that I have said unto you be circumspect and make no mention of the name of other Elohims neither let it be heard out of thy mouth they receive it straightly commanded not to do it right. and of course here yeah, we teaching on edifying about these false alayams so that our brothers and sisters in the church may know who they are and stand aloof from them and stay away from calling upon them anymore. Um, so Ahaya gave the admonition through Moses and then Joshua whom Ahaya had going to the land of Canaan, he gave the same admonition. You go to Joshua 23 and 7. That ye come not among these nations least that remain among you neither make mention of the name of the Elohims. Now this is interesting because the nations that were around they were calling on God so we were surely commanded don't make mention of the Elohims or the nations that were around. That's right. We're going to see the fullness of it here as we go further into the scriptures one of their deities is indeed God. Neither make mention of the name of the Elohims, nor cause to swear by them, neither serve them, nor bow yourselves unto them. So this is sad what they've done, because right. we're not supposed to mention their names. And right. they've taught us with English to call upon that name. Right. And then we're not supposed to swear by them. Sadly, people forswear themselves very loosely. Now, this name God, he told us don't call on any of the deities of the nations around us. And according to the scriptures and the language and the definitions in the concordance, God is a deity found in the land of Canaan. When you look at Joshua chapter 11 verse 17. Even from the Mount Halak, that goeth up to Seir, even unto Baal God, Baal God in the valley of Lebanon under Mount Hermon. The mountain is interesting, Mount Hermon, where the fallen angels right, came down. That's where they were. Right? <laughs> they were speaking amongst each other to, to do the sin. Yep, but, uh, yep. They named it Mount Hermon because that's where they implicated the curse on each other to agree to sin with the women. So, can we tap on Baal God and see the meaning of that word? Yes, it's H 1171, Baal God. Lord of Fortune. And that word fortune is the word for God, which stems back to the Babylonian deity. So we see the word God here in the land of Canaan. And take notice of the pronunciation being God among the Canaanites in the land of Canaan, where the children of Israel will come into. 
now we jump to Isaiah chapter 65 and 11. Now we were commanded not to call upon the names of the Alahayims of the people of the land. That's right. And we see that God was one that the Canaanites were calling upon because they named some of their land after it, right? Right. Sadly, we sinned and we did it anyway. Right. In Isaiah chapter 65 and 11, and it's actually one of the idols that they were offering offerings to. Right. As we go read it, Isaiah 65 and 11, please. But ye are they that forsake Ahiah, that forget my holy mountain, that prepare a table for that troop, and that furnished the drink offering unto that number. So he's telling how we forsook Ahiah by preparing a table for that troop. That means preparing a table, you're setting a meal, you're offering a sacrifice, you're preparing a feast for that troop. The thing they didn't tell us is that troop is actually the deity named God. Can you hit the definition, please? This is H1409. It means fortune or good fortune. And the pronunciation is literally God. Right. G-A-W-D. God. So knowing the actual word that was actually there when looking at Isaiah 65 and 11, we can see that they forsook Ahaya by preparing a table for God. And that lets us know that God is not Ahaya, our Alahayim. And that we ought not to make mention of that deity in reference to Alahayim or in reverence or prayer unto our Alahayim. So that we do not forsake Ahaya as our forefathers made the mistake of doing in the past. So among the Canaanites, Fortune was a deity worshipped among them known as God or Baal God, and the Israelites fell into worshipping God as well by making a table unto him. Now this deity, Fortune, known as God among the Canaanites, originated from among the Babylonians. We look at the definition in H1408 where it reads Gad, a variation of H1409. So it's speaking of the same deity in another dialect of the Chaldeans. It goes on to say Fortune, a Babylonian deity. So from the definitions we see in Chaldean, Gad was worshipped among the Babylonians and that same deity of Fortune was known as Baal God among the Canaanites. And the Israelites going into the land of Canaan learned to worship the idols of Canaan and they started offering a table to God which was a forsaken of Ahaya. And this all in all lets us know God is not a deity we ought to call upon, worship, or serve as we were commanded to do by Joshua as he led the people into the land of Canaan. The fruits of the Spirit is in all righteousness, goodness, and truth. So you can't be fully endowed in the spirit calling upon idols. Right. They're contrary one to another. Mishyaka has no concord with Belial, as uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 6 talks about. If you called upon it before, give a higher glory that he's revealed it, and stop calling upon it. Right. And, and repent. Yes, indeed. Right. Thank you. Praise Ahaya. Isaiah 42 and 8. Isaiah chapter 42 verse 8. I am Ahaya, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. And there we see, he's told he, he does not give his glory unto any other. That's right. There's no giving praise to calling on another name and thinking it's giving glory unto Ahaya, because he commanded us not to do it. Ignorance is winked at. Now the truth is being brought forth. We have to repent and discontinue it cast it from us and work righteousness of right. sincerity. He told Moses his name very straightly in Exodus 3 and 14. His name is Ahaya Ashre Ahaya. That's right. Thus shall you say unto the children of Israel, Ahaya has sent me unto you. That's right. It's very straightforward. Praise his name for his mercy. So, scripturally and linguistically, according to the concordance and according to the commandments, we have these are the names of idols that were in the land that Ahaya had conquered. Ahaya commanded us not to call upon any idol at all. And then he had Joshua admonish us not to call upon any of the idols in the land. And God is one of them. And then we see that Ahaya said we forsook him by preparing feasts for God, right. which is that true. 
So we have plenty of admonition to know we need not call upon that name anymore. And in closing, uh, Psalm 16 and 4. Their sorrows shall be multiplied that hasten after another Elohim. Their drink offerings of blood will I not offer, nor take up their names into my lips. And here we are admonished. We are not to take up their names into our lips either. So there you have the scriptural understanding on that word. And Mahaya increase you in his wisdom to call upon Ahaya Alahayim. That's right. Ahaya be gracious unto you. I want to uh, touch on something. Uh, Gad, the um, 12 patriarchs, the sons of Jacob. Mm -hmm. His name was Gad because of the meaning of the word being a troop. Yes. But yet we still weren't supposed to be worshiping or, or, or placing him as a high stature to uh -huh. call upon. So even in having the name, it doesn't mean that you're calling upon it because that's your name. Right, right. Because his name was, she said, behold, a troop. Because right. now she had a, a bunch of children. Right. She felt she, now she had some wealth, a large number. And she named his name God, which right. yes. it doesn't take away that they made the they made it into an idol. Right. Now using the word for worship is something right. else. Right. Or in reference to Allah. Because now you're you're tapping into spiritual realm. That's right. And you're calling on the wrong spirits. If a person's name is Gad, his name is Gad. Right. He's one of uh, one of the twelve patriarchs, right. as you said. But I'm not gonna call upon him and worship him. So, All right, I'm gonna call upon Ahayah Lahayim. That's right. Hope this has been edifying. Ahayah be magnified. Right. Shalom. Shalom.